Shalom, Ben Shalom. Folks, uh, on this video, I want to talk to you about um, a code, but also uh, how it came about. Um, recently, we've been talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Aseans, uh, and a lot of speculation of who, who they are. Um, one of the main beliefs among the real scholars were that they were from the temple. They were Levites from the temple, uh, scholars and scribes, and those who, um, well, were really exiled uh, because of the the uh, imposters that were in the church, the the temple. Um, but what I want to talk about today, and by the way, this is down, and you can go to Desi Scrolls on Wikipedia and scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you can actually see what were the uh, fragments and books that they found there. And you can see a pattern here. You can also take notice of what is not here uh, and never was here and never was hidden from you by the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church never and will never have control of these uh, very Jewish and Israeli documents. Um, even though there was some Greek in there, um, one of the fragments has Greek, which led the, um, the scholars to believe that the, these were, or at least some of them, because in the 400 years, there were many people that used um, the, these caves. It was known among the Jews and those that used, uh, or who were from the temple and uh, were scribes. So uh, they knew about it. It wasn't common knowledge of everyone, but um, they definitely knew about it. Uh, this is even suspected this is where um, John the Baptist was studying in the wilderness is with the Aseans. Um, the Aseans, by the way, believe in doing Torah, and that includes the book of Leviticus, all of Torah. They believe Torah came f to Moshe on Mount Sinai, um, and they were not pacifists. And one of the scrolls that were was in, in the Dead Sea Scroll cache was what's called the War Scroll, or as you can see here, what's called the War of the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness, which is the topic of my table that I'm going to talk to you because one day, uh, and it, it may be after a dream, um, some, sometimes you know, you'll give me a dream, and when I awake, I will remember something that happened in that dream, and it's, sometimes it's um, something I find encoded. And this time it was the Sons of Light have returned which I indeed found in the code. We're going to look at that in just a minute. <clears throat> but I want to take you over to what the War Scroll is first and show you because these Aseans or these Levites um, believe that they were living in the end days um, based on things like, um, well, the prophets and um, the book of Daniel, things like that. They, they held very dear to them. They had these scrolls um, and they knew prophecy very well. And so they was watchers of prophecy, and they believed they were in the, in the last days, and they believed in something uh, of, of an end-time battle. You may know it as Armageddon. Uh, the Jews will call it Gog and Magog, um, but it is a battle of light and darkness. I personally believe this is going to involve uh, angels and fallen angels and demons and all of those of those ranks. Uh, who battle in the last days. It's interesting that over 2,000 years ago, uh, these very uh, intelligent scholars of the Bible knew um, there was going to be a war. They just didn't know that they were not in it. Uh, I submit to you that I believe that we are on the brink of it now, folks. Never has there ever been a time when... Um, When uh, Syria has been in a ruinous heap, and I say Syria because it's not just Damascus, it's a whole country is in a ruinous heap. Uh, talk about timing, huh? Well, the little blue screen comes on. Um, but yeah, that's happening now. And it's part of prophecy. Uh, the two time periods put forward and defended by most probable time of... Where am I at? Let's back up here. The War of the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness, also known as the War Rule, or the Rule of War, and the war scroll 
It is a manual for military organization and strategy that was discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls. The manuscript was among the scrolls found in Qumran Cave 1, acquired by the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and first published posthumously by Eleazar Sukhanik. In 1955, the document is made up of various scrolls and fragments, including 1QM and 4Q491-497. It is possible that the War of the Messiah is the conclusion of this document. The and all the numbers fragments were published by the uh, ballet in discoveries of the Judean Desert when the rocks cry out, folks, uh, and comprise of shorter. Uh, recension of the war scroll and in two time periods have been put forward and defended by most probable time of composition the Seleucid periods in a Roman period and the Seleucid period proposals include the very beginning of the Maccabean revolt um, which was after um, they desecrated the temple folks uh, this happened before the time of Yeshua that is what, why in Matthew 24, and I would strongly point this out that you would take this in consideration. When Yeshua said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel and Matthew, the, the Hebrew that he was, and knew prophecy, made a side note. Let the reader understand because he's saying something very deep. It's called sold it's a hidden message. Um, the abomination of desolation actually happened already before the time of Yeshua. Uh, this was done by Antiochus Epiphanes. There's no debating that. It's already happened. So Yeshua is telling them something sowed. There is a deeper meaning to it. And I believe it's something symbolic that happens in the end days. But uh, these Maccabees were living during that time. And what happens? They see the destruction and what, uh, or, or the, what's going on in the temple, uh, the desecration. They take their scrolls, these Essenes, and they flee to the caves. And that's where they go. And this is the, the, what's going on. So here we are during the Maccabean revolt at the height of Jonathan's military power, 143 BCE, and the reign of John uh, Hacranus in 135 to 104 BCE. Scholars believe the scroll was composed during the Roman period propose a date from the middle of the 1st century BCE to the first decade of the 1st century CE. The War Scrolls description of weaponry and tactics led Yagal Yadin to ass uh, assign the composition of the scroll to a uh, date between the capture of Jerusalem by Pompey in 65 BCE and the death of Herod in uh, 4 BCE. So this was even during the time of Yeshua. Uh, more recently, uh, author Russell Gmerkin in the War Scroll Roman Weaponry Reconsidered disagrees with Yadin's, I can just read here, um, analysis and assigns that the weaponry described in the War Scroll to the 2nd century BCE. Lieutenant Colonel Peters from the U.S. Army retired, sides with Gerkman, what a name, and assigned that the Army and weaponry described in the War Scroll to be 2nd century BCE. Uh, so they were preparing for war. Um, to fight for what they believed in. And what did they believe in? The Torah. Uh, that's what they believed in. They kept the Torah, folks. Um, and so did Yeshua. And so did Paul, by the way. Um, he never did abolish this, folks. Old Testament does not mean done away with. Okay, so there's a misunderstanding there. Uh, these scrolls contain an apocalyptic prophecy of war between the sons of light and the sons of darkness. The war is described in two distinct parts. First, the war against the Ketim, described as a battle between the sons of light, consisting of the sons of Levi and the sons of Judah and the sons of Benjamin, and exiled of the desert against Edom, Moab, and the sons of Ammon, the Amalekites. You hear Rabbi Glazer didn't talk about the Amalekites all the time. These are the everlasting, these are the enemies of Yehoah, folks. Um, the Muslims, these, the, and, and not all, by the way. There are some Palestinians there. They're part of the Hebrew family. Uh, but the Amalekites are mixed in. And this comprise of what is, and I'm going to say it, it's Islam, folks. And they may de declare later that it's hate speech, but there's no way to put it. It is absolutely 
uh, Islam. This is the sword that is coming against uh, the wicked. This is the judgment. Um, my place. Uh, and their allies, Kittim and Asher, referred to as collectively as the army of Bilal. And those two assist them among the wicked who violate the covenant. They violate the covenant, folks. The second part of the war is the division, a war of division, and it is described as sons of light, how uh, united 12 tribes of Israel conquering the nations of vanity in the end. All the darkness is to be destroyed and light will, will live in peace in all eternity. The text goes on to detail inscriptions for trumpets and banners for all the war and the uh, uh, liturgies for the priests uh, during the conflict. And there are many key differences in the way of the war against the Kittim and the war of the visions that are described. The war against Kittim is referred to as a day of battle with seven stages. The sons of light and the sons of darkness, each winning three of the first six before the final victory. Uh, seven. See, there's a pattern of seven right there. Seven battles. And, and, and that's really weird because this is an ancient document, folks, but it's just like, it's like the... Um, the playoffs or something. You know, they got seven games. Where did that come from? Um, six before the final victory of the Sons of Light by divine intervention in the period of preparation, culminating in the restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. The beginning, the beginning of the description of the War of the Vision says that there are 33 years of war remaining of of total 40 years of war and the war against Kittim each side will fight alongside angelic hosts there you go look at there and supernatural beings in the final victory that is achieved for the tribes of Israel or their nations another distinction is that the war with Kittim and the sons of light face defeat three times before the victory but the war of the visions is is the war of divisions there is not mentioned to defeat or set back of any kind. That's really an interesting study there. And this is, again, this is real Qumran, Dead Sea Scrolls. This is something that these Levites, these priests, who were warriors, and they were not only priests, they were warriors, even during the time of um, David, folks. The sons of Zadok, they carried a sword. You might carry the Bible in your one hand and a sword in another. And some say, well, my Bible is my sword. Well, okay. <laughs> in a spiritual sense, you're absolutely right. But these were quite literally carrying scrolls in one hand and a sword in the other. They took to these caves what was very important to them, these, these books. One of the books being... Um, you know, fragments of Enoch, which has even been cited in our own scriptures, is to me uh, needs to be considered. That's why we're reading uh, Enoch currently on Saturday night. So tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, you can join us. We'll be reading uh, from the book of Enoch, I believe. Uh, we're 37 is where we're at now. So, on to the table. Let's take a look at that. This is how it came about. And this is the sons of light have returned. So the, the search in this was to figure out well, who the sons of light are. Who are they? You know I mean, there's, there's things that come across your mind. Could they be angels? Could they be the Levites? Could they be um, the Christians? Could they be what? Is it return saints? You know, so there's a lot of uh, consideration when you're searching this out. You want, you know, who is this? Um, so, Let's get right into to that now. Okay, so we're, I think we're looking at this last year. Um, of course, this is the axis term here. Uh, the Sons of Light have returned. Uh, it had a year in it. And uh, I thought it might have been significant at the time because it's a very small spacing. And I totally overlooked something <laughs> based on one letter. Uh, here is the date I'm talking about here. These four letters is Hey, Tav, Shin, and hey, which is uh, 2015. Uh, what I didn't see was inside there, those four, five, excuse me, five letters, uh, which is Bet Tav Shin Ein Vav, which is in 
5776. Very, I don't know, an oversight, something hid from me at the time. I don't know what it was, but I missed it. It was right there the whole time. So uh, it's actually saying in 5776 or in Two thousand sixteen. Uh, do the sons of light return? Are they here now? Who are they? Uh, Enoch and Elijah are here. Um, Elijah is actually in the plain text and vertical, next to the axis term. It's also uh, part of or shares a letter of that particular verse. We're going to read here in a, a moment. Um, and Enoch is here. Uh, you see Hanak in those blue letters, light, light blue letters, um, sharing a noon in the Navai, the prophet, and the Vav in Jerusalem. So right in, in that one verse, we have the name Enoch. We also have, uh, by the way, this is the same word, uh, the Navi, uh, two prophets right there. Uh, this was really cool. Um, vertical. Uh, using what, the abbreviation of a name, uh, the three letters of um, Jeremiah. We have come Jeremiah standing right next to it. And I don't get that. I don't know what the, what the significance of that is. It's just really interesting. It says, come Jeremiah. Um, Natsri is in here a couple of times. Natsri, or what would some would call... Um, the Christians, but I want you to see something, uh, and I just saw that right now, and it is staring right at me, and I missed this too, which is Ephraim, the Yod, and Natsri, or Christian, is Ephraim. Uh, that is very profound, and I can't believe I didn't see that either, but even, you know, that's why sometimes it takes me a while to get a table out, because I keep seeing things and they just pop out. It's the, these letters, and I know this one sounds crazy, but sometimes they, they light up like flames and words jump out. And as I'm sitting here looking at the Yod in Natsri, that's what happened with Ephraim jumping out at me like a fire. That is amazing. Um, uh, of course, that's another teaching that, uh, uh, who has been revealing to me who the elect are, who we are. Um, and that is Ephraim. Uh, Natsri is also here sharing uh, the Yod in the end of days. The Akret Yamin. Uh, we have Meshephet, Meshephet, uh, judgment. And this kind of makes a, a pattern here. Look at this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And it kind of makes a sickle pattern. Or, uh, yeah, like a sickle. You see here, and then it goes up and over like a sickle. Thrust thy sickle into the earth. Uh, war is here three times, and it's been a pattern that stuck out. Um, also, in close proximity to one another, we have three temples, the house of Yehovah, the house, and here it is, three times. And right up here, and I didn't see this the last time we were looking at this table because it really wasn't a topic. Uh, really of relevance until recently, and that is Nibiru or Wormwood, which are both here in the same place. Nibiru is here in the green letters. Then you have Wormwood right there, spaced. The noons are spaced just as same spacing as the letters in, in Nibiru. Um, we got a Navi up here and one here. So that's two prophets, like they're coming down. Uh, Horizontal and vertical, sharing that yod right there. So Navi is actually here four times. Three in the plain text, one ELS. And that's a breath full. Uh, the Moshiach, and, and notice this. Um, the Mem in judgment is the Mem in Moshiach. So he's coming with a sword this time, folks. Uh what else we got? Oh, Navi is also here, folks. I've misstated. Let me correct myself. Navi is also here. So it's here one, two, three, four, five times. 
the day of your the day of Yahuwah here, which is a great and terrible day. Um, We've also got the, the Levites down here in the green as well. So, you know, one of the things I, I, I've discovered is I have to take a break from certain tables because it just nothing, uh, you know, where, no words come. It, you know, uh, what do you call it? Writer's block, that kind of thing. Thought I saw another word. Anyway, um... What I had thought, and I've had many requests to get back into Tiny Chat, uh, which we used to do. There, you know, several tables we worked as a group, one being the resurrection table. We're going to start doing that again, and I'm thinking Wednesday nights. However, I'm planning on being in that room, and I'll leave a um, link to that down in the bottom in the description box, a code search at Tiny Chat. Uh, let me warn you, though, if you go over there and you go to the main site, which is tinychat.com, and you go to make you uh, an account, be, be aware that there's probably thumbnails there that you don't want to see because there's a lot of teenagers over there that are sinning. So, uh, and you might say, why are you there, Code Searcher? Well, um, that's where the church is set up, right there where the sinners are. So there'll be fellowship. And if you want to join and, you know, collaborate, uh, I'll be in there 8 o'clock tonight, Mountain Time, and that's, the link down at the bottom. All right, so let's get into the actual uh, verses. So if you guys want to come and chat with me, you got something you want to discuss, you want to help me search these tables, and I got several here down at the bottom, some that I've just come across, like um, this one right here, which is the Temple of Baal. Nothing worked on it yet. It's, it's sitting idle. Uh, still got work on the Trump uh, table. This is another one, Sitting Idol, which is the shortening of the days. Uh, here's another one, which I got from Chris today, which is uh, from Yahuwah, Yeshua. And then, uh, well, then that's one I've, I've been working. So, um, tonight, 8 o'clock Mountain Time. That's where I'll be. All right, very first verse, highlighted in the red, is in Isaiah. It's in the fifth chapter, 16th verse. But the Adonai of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and the Adonai is, that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Uh, that is a red right there. This next line in blue is Isaiah as well. And it is the 13th chapter. And we're going to be starting, I think, a... All right. Third, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones from mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of the multitude is like the mountains, and like the great, a great people, a tumultuous noise. Of the kingdoms of nations gather together, and the Adonai of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. The battle of the sons of light and darkness, folks. They come from a far country, even the end of heaven. So they come from a far country and even the end of heaven. So we got angelic beings that are involved here, even the Adonai and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye for the day of Yahuwah is at hand and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall the hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, and the pangs and sorrows take hold of them. Hear this, they shall be like the pain of a woman in travail, and they shall be amazed at one another, and their faces shall be as flames. They will... <laughs> You're going to have some raiment folks, some of that Shekinah glory, uh, you're going to be lighting up like flames. Um, behold, the day of the Lord, the day of Yahuwah cometh, cruel and both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. He didn't say the believers, he said the sinners. For the stars of heaven and the constellations, therefore, shall not give their light. Why? Is there Nibiru blocking something out? The sun shall be darkened 
from its going forth. Shua was on the cross for three hours, and the sun was darkened. What does that? Uh, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for, her, for their evil and for the wicked of their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I will punish the world for their evil and their wicked. Excuse me, I'm reading it again. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man of the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall be removed at her place in the wrath of Adonai of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. The sons of light have returned. There's a mention of Nibiru, wormwood. And there's a mentioning of the earth being shaken out of her place, folks. Uh, by the way, these prophecies have not been fulfilled yet. You are living in that time. Uh, next verse I got highlighted is in the yellow. And this is chapter 50 of Isaiah. We will go to... Who is among you that feareth Yahuwah, that obeyeth his voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? I'm talking about light here. Let him trust in the name of Yahuwah and stay upon his Elohim. For uh, behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourself round about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall be the, excuse me, this shall have mine hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, the sons of light. Ye that seek Yahuwah, let, excuse me, look unto the rock which ye are whom. Go back to your root, folks. The church was hijacked in 312. Go back to your roots. Go back to the rock where you were hewn out of the pent that you were digged. Look into Abraham, your father. We're all sons of Abraham. You are part of Ephraim. You know who you are. And unto Sarah that bore you, that bare you. For I called him alone and blessed him and it increased him. For Yahuwah shall comfort Zion, and he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of Yahuwah. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, give ear unto me, O my nation, for, my, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to the rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The owls shall wait for upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. I just kept going because it's such beautiful prophecy that we're going to see fulfilled because it's a promise. This next chapter is, uh, excuse me, verse is in Jeremiah. We're in chapter 1, I believe. Verse 7. But the Adonai said unto me, Say not that I am a child. Is Jeremiah is being called here. Come, Jeremiah. For thou shalt go and, I, and shall see, excuse me, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whosoever I command thee. And this is running right through it. It says, come, Jeremiah. When he was called, when Yahuwah called him, he said, come, Jeremiah. And he said, say not that I'm a child, for thou shalt not go to all that I shall send thee. And whoso, whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith Yahuwah. And by the way, Jeremiah was called a weeping prophet because he had one heck of a time, folks. Uh, the guy went through some persecution, okay? But Yahuwah was with him. More of the world of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? 
And, I, and he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And then he said unto me, Thou hast seen uh, well seen, for I have hastened my word to perform it. And the word of Yahuwah came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a, a, a pot. I see a thin pot. And the face thereof is toward the north. And Yahuwah said unto me, Out of the north is an evil, shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north. You know who the kingdoms of the north are? That's Ephraim, folks. And Ephraim, I mean, is Israel. And I don't mean all of Jews. There's Judah. There's two, there's two kingdoms here. There's Judah and there's Israel. And Israel became Ephraim because Jacob blessed Ephraim and said, Ye shall be the fullness of the Gentiles. So, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith Yahuwah, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and all and against all the walls thereof round about against the city of Judah. Um, and I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, for they have forsaken me, and they have burned incense unto other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and rise and walk and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. And he's done that to me. For behold, I have made thee this day a defended city, excuse me, defensed city, and a pillar, an iron pillar, a brazen wall against the whole land and against the kings of Judah and against the princes thereof and against the priests thereof. And against the people of the land. He was calling Jeremiah, this child, to stand up for what was right, to what was right and what was true, and call out the ones in the, in the temple who were bringing not their best for sacrifice, folks. And they were sacrificing to other, the other gods, deities. Same thing will happen here in this country. Folks, this last year, they had this Hindu deity on a New York building. Now they're putting up a temple of Baal. And by the way, in that temple of Baal table, and I just I should have mentioned this a minute ago, it said a skiff of 422. That's very, very small. And I know 419 or something like that is when they're supposed to construct it. That's very close to 422. What happens on 422? Maybe in this table. Uh, I would look at it as a day to watch. Uh, I don't even know if the thing is going to be there in New York on 422. I just noticed that number. So, <clears throat> little side note. Uh, sorry about the <laughs> sidetrack with the rabbit trails. All right, back to the script. Here we are. Going down to um, this next verse. This is also Jeremiah. We are in the 23rd chapter, and this is so, so beautiful because Ephraim has been a theme here, folks. They're in the middle of it. So are you. We'll start. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith Yahuwah. Therefore saith the Adonai of Elohim of Israel against the pastors that feed my flock. You've scattered my flock and driven them away, and not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith Yahuwah, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the, all countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, thus saith Yahuwah. Behold, the days come, said Yahuwah, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. That's two different houses, folks. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Adonai 
of Zadokim, the Lord of righteousness in English. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that they shall no more say that Yahuwah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, first Exodus. But Yahuwah liveth, which brought them and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country you are living in. And from all the countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. And all my bones shake, and I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of Yahuwah, and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, and because of the swearing, and the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith Yahuwah. Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness, and they shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, and Pay very close attention to this, folks, as your country is erecting temples of Baal. Saith Yahuwah, and I've even seen their folly and their prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. It caused my people Israel to err. I've also seen the prophets of Jerusalem in a horrible thing. They commit adultery and they walk in lies. And they strengthen all through the hands of evildoers that none do return from his wickedness. They are all of them as to me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith Yahuwah of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them wormwood, and I will make them drink the water of gall. For the prophets of Jerusalem are is profaneness gone forth in all the land. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, that make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of Yahuwah. They say unto you, them that despise me, the, uh, the Adonai said, ye shall have peace. This is what they'll tell you, you have peace. There's not going to be any Nibiru. There's no seventh planet, or planet nine. There's no planet X. There's no wormwood coming. Rapture is going to happen. You won't see any of that. And they will say unto everyone that walketh after their own imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the council of Yahuwah and hath perceived and heard his word, and who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of Yahuwah hath gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind that shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. And the anger of Yahuwah shall not, ret shall not return until he has executed till he hath performed the thoughts of his own hearts, and in the Akhret Yamim, the end of days, the latter days, ye shall consider it. Here we are, folks. And you see a mention of World War III. They're setting up temples of Baal in New York City. At one time, at like Passover time, they would have crosses on the side of these New York buildings in the 50s. Now they're putting up Hindu gods of destruction. And they're flashing in your face what they're going to do. Because there's a war coming against the sons of light and the sons of darkness. It's already going on. It's already happening. And it's been going on. This great war in the heavens, the dragon, it's coming down to the earth now. He's going to be cast out and all his minions will have full, full reign over these inhabitants of the, of the land. And if you're not in the right place, if you're not with him and marked by him, because uh, I, I don't see, folks, pre-trib pre -trib, pre -trib rapture happening here. Rapture does appear, but I don't see a pre-trib. Nothing indicates that. Matter of fact, Yeshua said, ye shall see tribulation. So, uh, just a thought. There is six churches mentioned has left behind in the tribulation. We are in Joel. I think that's Joel. Yeah. Joel. 
Hmm. That's right. Yoel, fourth chapter. I think we'll start at 15. And the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And you shall roar out of Zion, and his, utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. This is the second time we've seen a verse talking about that. But you will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel, your Ephraim. Ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. And, they shall, and, they, and then shall Jerusalem be holy. There shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk and honey. And the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of Yahuwah. And it shall water the valley of Shittim. Mm. Mm. We are so close. And folks, if you're following, there's so much deception out there with these false prophets and false teachers. <clears throat> telling you that there's going to be a rapture in May and there's Passover in May and it's confirmed in the codes and it's game over. Folks, don't follow this. Run from it as fast as you can because it, 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 when there's truth and light coming forth, there's going to be a mimic. It's false light. It's false truth. And what it is, it's, it's to discredit anything else from that say, uh, not only say genre, but in this, this particular eschatological field, eschatology field, if that's even a word, code searching. Uh, there are those that came last year trying to discredit me and ruin my reputation. I even see Pastor Paul coming out of an attack now, people making up fake accounts about him. They did the same thing to me, brother. Uh, there are going to be those coming against you, and yet they uh, yet they they still do try to hack, uh, destroy, disrupt. This next one is Micah, and we're going to be wrapping up here in two two more verses, folks. Thank you for bearing with me for almost forty five minutes, but it has been a while since I've done a table. Even though you don't see that, I am working uh, with the time I have. And he shall stand and feed the strength of Yahuwah with the majesty of the name of the Yadonai, his Elohim. And they shall abide, for now shall be great, and even unto the ends of the earth. And this man shall be peace. When the Assyrian shall come into your land, and when he shall tread in your palaces, and shall in the White House, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and an eight principal men, and they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. And of course, I was speaking spiritually. Uh, the Assyrian is a conglomerate of all of these uh, characteristics of the man of sin. Nimrod is the root in the entrances thereof, thus shall be he be the he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders. The remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as dew from Yahuwah, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. The remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. Hello, Ephraim shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth into pieces, and none can deliver. Thine hand shall be lifted upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. Hmm. There seems to be a pattern in this. Next Verse is in Zephaniah, in the first chapter. Uh oh, two tone, that must be something interesting. 
Let's see. Ah. The great day of Yahuwah is near. It is near and hasteth greatly even the voice of the day of Yahuwah. And the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastefulness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and the alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Yahuwah, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. And neither their silver nor their gold be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he shall make every, even a speedy riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. Gather yourself together, yea, gather yourself, O nation not desired, before the decree became, came forth, before the day passed as chaff, before the fierce anger of Yahuwah come upon you, before the day of Yahuwah's anger come upon you, seek ye the Lord, seek ye Yahuwah with all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be ye shall be hid, in the day of the Lord's of Yahuwah's anger. Let's read that again. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be. And it shall be hid in the day of Yahuwah's round. That is amazing. Because he says, go into thy chambers until the indignation passes. Hmm. <sighs> There's judgment coming to the land, but not just this land, to the whole world. The whole world. Why are they digging tunnels? Why? Why is all these cameras from uh, the, the southern hemisphere pointed in the direction of this, the setting sun to, to an area where there's being per perturbation of planets? I'm showing you in these I'm showing you. It's in the mainstream news now. They're talking about it in New York Post. Folks, it's getting serious. I pray you are one of those that he keeps hidden. All right, Zechariah. And oh, 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 Zechariah. One day, my brother, I'll get to speak with you. For this insight, you are given. See what Zechariah says. For I will gather, excuse me, behold, the day of Yahuwah cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Adonai go forth and fight against those nations. We're talking about Yeshua here, folks. As he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand upon that day on the Mount of Olives. And this is how you know Reel is not the Messiah. He didn't step on the Mount of Olives and cleave it in two, folks. That is yet to happen. He shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half the mountain shall be rem removed toward the north, and half of it toward the south. That's how you know the Messiah has arrived, folks. An entrance like that. There's going to be no doubt at that point who he is. So, just a little side note on that. And ye shall flee into the valley of the mountains, and the valley of the mountains shall ye shall reach unto Azel. Ye shall flee like the like ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. 
and you who are my Elohim shall come and all his saints with him. And it shall come to pass in that day that light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day. The sons of light have returned. And it shall be one day which shall be known unto Yahuwah, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that even evening shall be light. You know why? Because Yeshua is going to light up everything. There won't be no sun to light it up. There will be the sun to light it up. If you, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So there you go, folks. This is the sons of light have returned. And I believe we're, we're here close. And according to this table, it says in 2016. However, I am looking at some very interesting data based on headstones from uh, Zeor Israel from the 400s. And based on this information, I think that we're seeing that, that the, the year is off by one year. Uh, I will, I'm going to present some of that information from uh, Saudi Moon to you very soon. Very interesting. And I think that's why there's confusion. And I think that's why they're celebrating Passover later than it's supposed to be. And I've had three confirmations that we celebrated it on the correct day. Um, Israel is half, Israel as a nation is off. Um, and it is by no means in May. That is a fact. Uh, so, folks, thank you for keeping me in your prayers. Don't forget, tomorrow night, we will be reading um, from Enoch. Also, tonight, down in the bottom, link. I'll be in tiny chat if anybody wants to come by. Fellowship or uh, collaborate. So, she will bless you and keep you. Thank you for keeping me in, in, and Darla, in your prayers and supporting us in this ministry. Shalom.